He was a national leader and a martyr for freedom on the level of Martin Luther King, but other than a Peter Gabriel song, you might never have heard of him. But first, we start in 1587. Virginia Dare, granddaughter of Governor John White of the Roanoke Colony, becomes the first English child born in the Americas. Now, we mentioned Roanoke yesterday, and today, on this date, 1590, John White, the governor of the colony, returns from a supply trip to England and finds the settlement deserted with just the cryptic word Croatan, inscribed on a tree the fate of the colonists remains one of the great unsolved mysteries of american history 1920 the 19th amendment to the united states constitution is ratified guaranteeing women's suffrage susan b anthony uh, who is not on a quarter by the way is the most well-known of the suffragists but there were many others that a big date in history 1958 vladimir nabokov's controversial novel lolita published in the united states the novel is notable for its controversial content, the protagonist and a rather unreliable narrator, a 37-year-old literature professor called Humbert Humbert, obsessed with the 12-year-old daughter, Dolores Hayes, with whom he becomes involved with after he becomes her stepfather. Lolita is his private nickname for Dolores. After its publication, Lolita attained classic status, becoming one of the most well-known and controversial examples of 20th century literature. The word Lolita has entered pop culture to describe a sexually precocious girl. And finally, 1977, in South Africa, there was this. This song was written for a very brave man. A man who preached nonviolence in a state which has racism enshrined in its constitution. A man who was imprisoned, tortured, and killed in a jail in South Africa. This is for Stephen Biko. Anti-apartheid activist Steve Biko, on this day, 1977, arrested at a police roadblock in King Williamstown, South Africa. He had been banned by the South African government, which meant that he was prohibited from speaking to more than one person at a time. At the time of his arrest, he was charged under the nation's anti-terror law, which allowed imprisonment without charge of anyone who endangered the order in the country. He later died from an injury sustained during his imprisonment, bringing attention to South Africa's repressive apartheid policy. No less an authority than Nelson Mandela commented that in order to preserve apartheid, they had to kill Steve Biko on this date, August 18th, 1977. That's your look back in history, and I'm Donald Ng.